Today, mm -hmm. we have an extraordinary guest who wears many hats, a transformational coach, a naturopathic doctor and consultant, and she empowers driven women to reach their highest potential in personal lifestyle and business through the profound realm of quantum healing. Her expertise lies in unlocking the soul's purpose through somatic healing and understanding the energetics and applying tools from human design and gene keys. Join me in welcoming the founder of the Abundance Coaching Institute, Carla Trigo, a true visionary dedicated to integrating, activating, and expanding the soul to the levels of infinite abundance. Carla, welcome to the Transcendent Minds podcast. Wow, thank you so much. And I am really so grateful for what you just said and your opportunity uh, for having me in your space. So thank you. No, you're welcome. If you could have dinner with any historical figure, dead or alive, who would it be and why? That is a good question. Now I have a did it know how many people it comes to me. Hmm. It's coming John Lennon. I don't know why. For uh -huh. That's interesting. I have to really think about that. But some of those words, maybe that's why I imagine, right? That is coming just right away. So I think this is a phenomenal compound of why imagine is a great point to start maybe that conversation, this conversation. Let's start with your early days, because it's often said that the roots of greatness are formed during one's formative years. Not always, but usually. Can you take us back to your childhood and tell us about the key experiences or influences that shaped or that helped shape who you are today? Yes, of course. As many of us or all of us, we have a life story and our life story, it starts in the moment that we incarnated in this beautiful earth. So with that said, the first years of childhood until seven years old was very in tune with the people around that help to really bring some essence into place, right? But from that period, I have to really start to survive and to focus more in the positive aspects of all the experiences and events that happened through that moment from eight years old and above. So the childhood, as everybody it can really point it, is an incredible pathway for us to start pulling out all these treasures that we bring into this lifetime. So I have to say that was not easy at all. Because from having everything, I found myself living in the streets, working at the age of eight in a circus in South America and not having food and so on and on. But those experiences gave me a huge perspective of what is possible behind th those events, right? What is the possibilities or the opportunities that are hiding in those events. So that gave me a huge perspective of so many gifts and talents and yes, and light that comes from those moments of shadow and darkness, let's say. Everyone's journey is so unique and many people face pivotal moments or challenges that set the course of their future. Was there a defining moment in your life? Was there a turning point that guided you towards your current endeavors? Starting from the, the moment of those events at the age of eight, it made, made those events a new pathways, right? So we have to understand though that life is not only linear. So everything that you experience is because you have that soul contract that is needed for you to develop yourself in this lifetime. As you mentioned, we have challenges and we have events and we have so many stories that most of them are, are, are very connected with the, the pain and the suffering behind. But those are the impulse that gave us the opportunity to bring consciousness and to bring in ourselves to the next level of really ask the questions, right? Why I'm here and what is really the purpose of why I have to pass through those stuff and those things and those events that actually gives you an incredible sense of, of purpose and direction and intentionality for your life. So, yeah, so many to share. But that moment at the age of eight was the, the starting point. And if we move forward through your timeline, because I often find that 
in conversations with people, their personal passions and their professional aspirations intersect. How did your interests evolve and when did you realize that this was the path you wanted to pursue? I always started with the great questions. I think that if we are training ourselves to stop and to pause and to start asking questions, they're going to lead you to the essence of who you are and to the places and the people and the opportunities that are part of your own biography. So for me, at the age of very, I think very young, always I was confronting my teachers and asking, but why this is all about or what is part of the history, avoiding some things. So I'm always connecting the dots, trying to connect the dots. And I had always like a kind of longing for knowing really who I am. And that led me to read and to have conversations with people and to move forward, not to be just okay with the first answers is to try to figure out what is behind those answers and and to make more questions about those answers. And slowly, but surely because of my life story, also I have to learn to heal, right? And I was looking for those tools that helped me to be consequent and focus myself into the positives. That's why in the beginning I started to, to study natural medicine because I wanted to understand the body and the mind and emotions, how those all are connected. And from there, astrology and biographical work and understanding the pathways of what was familiar for me that was resonant from all these years. And that was my path for bringing the best in people's lives. I find it always interesting because along the way, we encounter mentors and allies and we learn these valuable lessons we journey through life. Were there any key figures or who were the key figures that played a significant role in your development and what lessons did you learn from them? The first figures were my parents, right? And because of them and the difficulties and I lost my father when I was 11 and my mother disappeared, but all these figures that we encounter in in the beginning of our story are crucial for us, our masters, are really the messengers for us to not only to heal, but as well are the the people that has in their hands and the impact in our souls, right? Incredible features and as well messages that we need to unlock and to understand uh, many things. But I could say I have few teachers during that developing years And then because I was very curious about life, I was traveling many years and I found extremely important people. I live in Israel for 12 years. I found incredible people that are connected with the ancient wisdom in Jerusalem. I was just hunger of knowing, wow, there is so much more. What the people are showing in those levels. But yeah, it's a of course, later you have historical figures also that are important in each of our curiosity pathways. Yeah in art or in history and whatever that also help us to profile us somehow. But I think that the most important figures are those that are close to us that we're not paying so much attention. That's so true. I remember it's only in the last 10 years since my father passed away over 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I remember some of the things he used to say when I was a kid and I would dismiss them. Mm -hmm. Actually, what he had to say was really wise. Yes. And it's only now that I have the faculty and the experience and the space and the wisdom to know the difference. And how dismissive I was at that point. Almost, oh, what do you know? You're not up with the times. You're part of the old school, the old ways. But really, his wisdom was timeless. Yes. And I think that even we suffer sometimes through their own life, right? Uh, I think that there are huge lessons behind the, those connections. And that's why our life has to be seen not in a linear way, but yes, uh, from the spiritual part of you, because there's so much more that we are missing. No straight lines in nature. Every blade of grass is different. Your yes. body doesn't have <laughs> any straight lines, but we think in straight lines and we build things in straight lines. And as you've progressed in your career, 
there must have been moments of triumph and accomplishment. Can you share one of your proudest achievements? What did that moment signify for you, both personally and professionally? I can say three moments that were very important in that development aspect that you're mentioning. One was to be able to achieve the greatness of being one of the first women in security or a high level intelligence from nothing, right? From being the street and having a figure of people that helped you to become that person for me was very important to achieve it because it was my effort and was my intentionality, my intentions, my focus on oh, what can I do for me and for others in that level. So that was one. I didn't have um, the rhythm of finishing my high education at the age of 22. I did it later on in life. So that was another thing that in, uh, at the age of 29, 30, so in my 30s, let's say, I finished four degrees in, in, in three years in a manner that you cannot even think how this is possible. But that gave me an accomplishment of, wow, I am right now clear in, in the way of nourish myself first to be able to give to others later. Yes. And the other thing is to be able to be part of a TV show that was very fun that I never thought that would be possible. And as well, it was like another way of, of showing that, you know what, we can do it. Everybody, if you have the right intention and yes, I am there, <laughs> yeah, you can achieve whatever dream you have. That's why imagine that came right in the beginning of this conversation is that get imagine, guys, do the work. Take off all these things that create like a kind of veil and, oh my goodness, bring those miracles to your life. Everything is possible. Using our imagination is something that has been stripped out of us with left Correct. brain dominance. And that's one way of keeping control of people because you Good follow telling. a curriculum, you don't mm -hmm. really get an education and Absolutely. getting an education is totally different. On the flip side of all of their setbacks can be inevitable, an inevitable part of any journey through life. Can you take us through a challenging period in your career and how did you navigate it? And what did you learn from that experience? It, it was not easy path because I was very alone and I had to, to really be very consistent and persuasive, right? To really achieve those goals. But I remember. When I moved from Europe to the States when I was 42 years old with two small kids and my English was not so good at the time and I had to leave everything behind, my home, my work, my businesses, uh, everything that was done in a way. And I found myself starting from the beginning, no referrals, no people. And it was a kind of really setback because my husband lost his job and I didn't have yet all the skills to be able to offer what I knew in Spain on my level of being in service with people. So I had to clean in kitchens and that cleaning put me into a huge perception of really embracing myself, even in the pit moments where you have to give food to your kids, right? And you have to do whatever is needed for you to give be the best. And that period was really painful because it was the ego part of, oh my God, what is all this about? I'm suffering here. But at the same time, just by cleaning those big pots in those, was a huge kitchen, then I learned so much as well, right? So that was a setback, but at the same time, I pushed forward. <laughs> that was a very important period as well for me to rec recognize, yeah. Looking at your present role as a, a doctor of naturopathic medicine and a consultant and a coach. To me, it's clear you've achieved remarkable success from where you've come from to where you are now. And what drives you now and how do you stay inspired to continue pushing boundaries in your field? I love that question. And because I'm not attached to the outcomes, I'm just focused on how can I help people? Really, and we are, one of my intentions here is to really awaken people to have more conscious about we need to break through those manipulations states that we are living into it, 
we have to connect really with the source of who you are really in, and to leave behind that victimhood, la la la, that we are created, that this is real, which is not real. And we have just the perception of that reality and to bring the core of who you are into place. And that's what is inspired me and inspire me to really give the tools for people that are willing to do this work and to really connect with the truth and the and authenticity itself, right? And to start building a new society. And the society that we have right now is very toxic. It's very sick. We are very manipulated by the media and by the pharma and many other stuff. Even in the curriculum in the school, we have to go back to the essence of the human being and to bring that courage to speak out loud about who you are and who you are becoming in this process and to understand that we are creators of your reality no matter what. And we have to start being the cause of things and not to be the effect of things mm. and be the victim. So really inspire me very much and hold the space for people to really help them to bring those gifts into the world because a new humanity has to be built now. I love that. And I love the fact that you are here as a soul amplifying the essence that is giving the kiss of life to what is a toxic world in many places. And you're a powerful conduit for divine transformation. And I find that really inspiring. Can you take us back to the moment when you decided to step into your own truth and embrace the path of quantum healing? How did that moment or that pivotal moment shape your approach to empowering others? That's a great question. So if we are putting or if we are knowing a little bit the laws of the spirituality and as well the laws of this physicality, we are living towards our biography. Our biography is not only the time that you were born, but as well, every seven years of the life of the person, things happen. And those things are related to the astrology and are related as well about how the moon works through you or other planets that you have accordingly with your own purpose and soul contract. So one of the things that I always put a lot of emphasis is the moon nodes and the north nodes and south nodes. And those are positions where the planets are telling you things and the spiritual realm is telling you things. So we have a very important one when we are 18, another one when we are 37. We have another one close to 55 and another one 63 and above. That means that there are portals. And for me, the connection of being awakened or more conscious in these periods gave me a huge shift of perspective. And it's very interesting when you do the work and you start to understand your biography, how everything happens for a big reason that you don't see it yet. And that is related to your soul contract. So when you put all these pieces together and you understand how the energetics flows, then it's when, wow, and you are an open vessel to receive downloads and to receive new insights, abundance for sure, and to start figure out what is your blueprint for this timeline. And also, listen, the soul and the spirit are ongoing, right? We have only the, this physicality or this carrier in this moment, but we are coming from something and we are going towards something else. So we have to put together all these thoughts. We are not a fraction of something. We are a one of all. So... When you understand all these laws and, and you understand how to apply into the physical world, this is an amazing aspect of awakening and, and, and consciousness, right? That we, which is so important in the moment that we live in. And I, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to you for the consultation that I had with you and the work mm. that you did for me, because it really made me look at not just the state of being but the stages and there were levels and layers to the whole thing and that gave me uh, mm -hmm. a much deeper insight <laughs> and a, a better penetration into this next stage of my life so thank you so much for that it was absolutely valuable to me and I would urge anybody to get in, in contact with you and have that consult shameless plug there 
Um, <laughs> Thank you. In our previous conversations, you often talk about embodying energy as a means to live one's truth. Mm -hmm. Can you share more about what that means and how it serves as a catalyst for deep self-understanding and emotional mastery? Great question as well. We are very conditioned and programmed by not only the moment that we were born, right? But as well, the culture, the education that we got, the uh, society that we are ours. So we are operating through intellect more than the embodiment of really what are the things as a truth and authenticity. So one of the things that we forgot very much is to unify the neuro neurological point of view of things with the rhythm things and with the metabolic things. That means that we have to feel the experience in our body because the body, the physical body is the oldest that we have in this evolution of humanity where there are very intuitive memories that we need to recuperate. So when we are starting to listen to those energetic compounds, to comprehend your aura, to comprehend how it works in your electromagnetic field and understanding that it's not the mind, right? It's not the way how you, your intellect is providing the information, then you will start to understand how the waves of your body is telling you what is truth and what is not truth. And to decondition in all this stuff, you can do it with many tools, as you mentioned before, like human design, you can do it through gene keys, you can do it through biographical work or expression of nature and to be in connection with nature. It will give you a huge perspective of really what is the authentic pathway and not the perception of that reality that you feel that is real, right? That's a huge point of transformation because we're starting to be responsible and we are not throwing the balls outside of our field. We are starting to see ourselves from the core and say, hey, I am responsible. I need to shift something. If I'm doubting about something, or maybe it's because I was rejected and I have created a huge movie that I'm rolling, I'm rolling through that movie, which is not real. It's just your movie that is built in the perception of the reality that happened to you maybe 20 years ago. You haven't written your own script. Somebody else has written the script Correct. for you. You're playing that out. Yeah. And they told us, right, in this mechanicist way of working and living and having relationships that we are in a a linear way of living, which we forgot the spiritual part of it, which is huge. In this 3D dimension, we see only the 1% of the whole picture. What happened with the 99% that we don't see is there and it's acting in your life and it's acting in your business and it's acting in the way how you brand yourself or the results that you have. But we need to understand the laws of karma, the laws of incarnation, the laws of the spiritual realm. What is telling us? What are the things that is going on in this 3D dimension? that we are so attached to it. The understanding is important and also understanding the fact that until we actually address the subconscious blocks, the unconscious blocks, then you, know, yes. you can have all the affirmations you want, all the vision boards you want, yeah, take all absolutely. the courses you want, but that is still running the show. And yes. it's, it's running the show 95% of the time. So you need to address those things and have a clearing session so you can move forward, which is what I found that a lot of your work addresses because you start to then see that other 90%. You start to look at that and you're able to have these conversations with the unconscious mind. And Carla, for listeners who are feeling exhausted from living for others, do you have any advice for them to start the journey of embodying their energy and living their truth? Yes, absolutely. The first thing that I will suggest is to create that internal path and space. And how you do that is to pause. We need to learn to pause because if we are just in the hustle and hustling, not only this is going to impact your physical body, that's why you are exhausted. Right, your physicality is telling you, hey, I cannot anymore with this rhythm, is because we didn't get ourselves to the point where we have this space, sacred space in within us that gave us the opportunity to listen, really listen to our higher self, 
really listen about the clues, really listen about what is the truth that I desire to see in my life and start to shift and start to really break through those paradigms that were exposed from the collective and within that is ours, but which is not. So exhaustion comes because we are most of the time living in that 95% of the shadow and we need to pause to start seeing the light behind that shadows, but only is possible if we pause in, if we really comprehend that I don't desire to be anymore the fact of the things, I am from now on the cause of everything. When you start delving into the cause worlds rather than the effect worlds, then you can be at effect of what is being caused because you understand the causation of things and we tend to be so involved in the outcome and the result of things, but we don't necessarily yes. the cause. And, um, and that stretches into even modern medicine today. We don't look at the cause of things. We just mm -hmm. look at the result of things. And then we try and deal with that. Exactly. And, um, which is wrong, which is completely the, the oh. opposite perspective, right? And this happened with everything. You have the medical situation that we have worldwide, right? is the effect of something is the symptomatology. So just put in the, the, the right drug into the medication that is going to alleviate that symptom, but we're not going to the cause. Mm -hmm. So as well, the same behavior in our lives, in how I build relationships and how I'm connected with my business is to be conscious because if not, we're in 95% in autopilot. And this is, and tr we throw in all the responsibility to someone else. And this is what is going on in this humanity. It's completely crazy what we're seeing right now. I'm not responsible. You are the one that creates everything. So I'm going to be reactive to that. So we are in constant reaction instead to be pausing and be proactive about things. It's not about me. It's about we and, and what we can do, different approaches and different way of communication. And this is only happening if we are creating that internal space and sacred space. We have to recognize, which is what I see the work that you did with me. I started to recognize certain things so I could reflect on it, which is the pause. And yes. then I could measure the feelings I was having about it and looking into how I can start to rebuild and reset and rewire. But it wasn't okay. until I had that reflection, which we're not great at doing in our society we don't take the time to pause to reflect to take a Correct. step back and i give this analogy is that when i'm out photographing and i want to take a wide angle picture i have to take several steps back to exactly. get the whole picture in if mm -hmm. i'm too close to it I only get a very narrow part of the image which doesn't exactly. show everything Exactly. So when you take that step back, then the heart of the matter can usually be seen from afar when you take that step back. And yeah. so I think your point mm -hmm. about pausing is so important. I know in your work, you have this a beautiful blend of ancient wisdom and modern science. And I have a two-part question really here is, can you share a specific instance where this synthesis brought about a profound transformation from one of your clients. And the second part is how do you see the intersection of these two realms shaping the future of personal development and healing? Wow, great question. So let's start with the second one. I think it's a crucial, it's crucial to start unifying the spirituality or the spiritual realm with the physical realm, because this is connecting with the core of the one, right? The oneness of everything. We cannot separate things. In every single organ in our physical body, there is a spiritual part of it. And if we understand how the laws works on it, we can heal in many manners, right? The emotions, the, the etheric body, the physical body, the astral body, the spiritual body. So it, it, we have to come again to the unique. The, the one, right? And not to fraction and not to separate because this is the way that humanity is going to develop is to becoming connected with the, the center. And the center is the heart. The heart unifies everything and the law for everything, right? 
but but we need to be conscious about what that represents in this moment, how we can all together put in that consciousness and put in that intentionality to ask, first of all, questions that bring us more in depth, really, who is the person that is named Peter or Carla, whatever, is beyond that, is much yeah. more. So we have to reconnect with that. And with my clients, I can perceive so much. And with all my humble approach, I'm saying that right? because my intention always is to create that secret space that the person itself with the work that we do is to find the right answers for themselves. And they call me sometimes in the state like the pro provocative change maker, like I'm provoking some kind of questions here. And I'm just finishing right now, like a huge group of 44 human beings integrating all what we're talking a little bit about their own biography and what happened in those levels of uh, seven cycle of the year of the person anchoring with art as well to connect with the highest selves and the transformations are extraordinarily phenomenal very intense i had a client that for me details about the story of the person are crucial the life story of anybody has an incredible treasure in between. So the small detail that you may not put an intention on that, or it seems like it's not important, is very important. I have a lady that she was in her 50s and she was an architect and had some kind of issues with expression and, mo and, and how she can pronounce her needs through the voice to communicate correctly. So we discovered in this process that in the first seven years of her life, she incarnated with a mobility problem that was with not moving herself for six months on her first years, right now for her first uh, months of, of life. And that particular detail influenced the whole biography of herself. Only when she could release that, I cannot breathe, I'm not welcome in this life, then she started to heal all her relationships with their own family members and so on. So there is a lot of small details that we need to understand that are super crucial for us to release many tensions and to bring more prosperity and abundance and results into our lives. Yeah, for sure, more joy and happiness, right? Warmth in the heart. Yeah. That's beautiful. And yeah. it's clear that would promote a quantum leap Correct. for her as well. And I know that before you talked about reconnecting with a source of love and well-being. Can you elaborate on how individuals can tap into this power to manifest their desires, attract abundance? and access mm -hmm. to divine guidance. Have you witnessed a profound shift in someone's life when they fully embrace, aligned with their source energy? Absolutely, yes. And the reason is because we are shifting lifetimes, right? If the work with quantum physics or the quantum leaves that you can create in your life is absolutely magnificent because we are a spark of the spirit. The only thing is we have to reconnect with that again and to understand that we are part of that fractal divine spirit in form, but we forgot when we decide to incarnate in this lifetime. So people that work with me, they uh, not only for sure heal their own biography and relationships, because we have to understand that every single person that we are meeting in our lifetime is because of a relationship that is related to karma from another lifetime. So we have to be very cautious about that. It's not, I am the victim of whatever situation. This person or that situation comes to me as a messenger that is going to give me a resolution about something that I have to work with. When I am responsible with that, I'm bringing that into the conscious level and I'm doing the deconditioning work, then the channels are starting to be open. Then your aura is starting to be open and then your vessel is open to receive. It's very feminine. It's very beautiful because it's really connecting with that allowance of I'm embracing myself, I'm evolving, I'm now ready to open and I'm connected with the divine, right? With more the spiritual realm. And now I'm downloading the things that is needed, not only for me, but as well for humanity. 
And another thing that is super important is to, str to trust. What does it mean in business, the trusting process? I had clients that collapsed time and space and in a very short period of time, they created few figures without even thinking that was possible or feeling that was possible. So they bring more abundance, they bring, the, bring more prosperity and all is based in the desire to receive, not for the self alone, but for impacting the humanity. How you do that is to release in that attachment to the matter and to trust that there is something more that no one told us that is there, but is connecting with us if we are starting to recognize all the small clues and messages that are around us. I think the shift has to be from what can I get to what can I contribute? That's for sure. And more how I can be in the being and who I'm becoming in this process, no more than the doing and more than I'm having. Then everything is coming in the, into the flow. And you release the tension of me controlling something. I'm, I don't control zero. I'm just here to be leading by the many other spiritual aspects of ourselves that is giving us the opportunity to bring into the now, wow, incredible miracles and opportunities and people and that. But we have to decondition. We have to create that muscle of awareness and consciousness. And I have to tell you, it's so marvelous. It's so phenomenal. And I have a, a smile right now because when I see this in people's lives and say, oh, oh my goodness, this is the way. I love it. I love it. Let's celebrate. It's amazing you shift from the persona to essence and Correct. You, start, you have that identity shift, something that I did many years ago. And not that I don't struggle with my ego and all the rest of it, but I'm so much more aware of it. And one of the things I find is that it's given me peaceful chemistry and that mm -hmm. peaceful chemistry has given me peace of mind. Correct. And everybody feels it, right? Feel it. It's like, I feel that energy is very loving. It, it is, is very, very loving. loving, loving. Yeah. 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 Let's talk about your Abundance Coaching Institute, because as the founder of the Abundance Coaching Institute, I'm interested to understand more about the core principles that guide your teaching. That's the first thing. And also what sets your institute apart? in helping individuals integrate, activate, and expand their souls to infinite levels of abundance. Are there any specific practices or methodologies that you find particularly impactful in facilitating the soul level transformation? Yes. Everything that I learn, right? What I have done it is I transform it with my own colors, with what is truth for me. And I only teach those things when I embody really those things. I will never teach something to someone or coach something to someone if I didn't embrace 100% and beyond. What does it mean for me? What is the embodiment of each of the small details of core that I'm teaching to one person, individuals or a group or teams or whatever? This is very important. This is one of my core values that I always said to people that anything that I am offering is because I know that works and I know that I embody 100%. I will never teach something from the perspective of being intellectual. I learn something and I'm going to deliver ever. Yeah. So with that said, the thing that I'm bringing to the person's life or business is the methodology that I was tapping into it many times and gave incredible success, not only to myself, but others. And I polish and I test it again. And I know that the person that is going to be in my sacred space or in, in my field is going to escalate it amazingly because that's my core as well. I bring this from this lifetime. I have it in my heart. I have it in my field. So it's, I know how this can be delivered for other people. It has to be with my own flavor, right? My mythology works and I use different tools because that gave me different perspectives of what the needs are for different people. I'm not applying everything for everybody. Different people is different. The needs are completely unique. My attention, intention, and my service is unique for those human beings. And my presence is beyond 100%, beyond 100%. And doesn't matter if a person is 
paying me $50 or paying me thousands of dollars, I'm going to show up in the same level. And the core is really to bring those tools that are connected with the unseen world, right? Let's say like it's not tangible, that is all related to the quantum physics that is no one taught us, but is we arrive to the time that has to be delivered. And I had the privilege because I live in Israel and with the ancient wisdom people that taught me a lot about those laws. And I am ready right now to share it with people. And I use, as you see, art and I use natural laws. So there is a lot of beautiful tools that are unique given for whoever is in my field. That's beautiful. Can you talk to me about the Gene Keys program? Because that contributes to the process of living authentically. But what unique gift does it offer in comparison to other self-discovery approaches? Yes, good question. As I mentioned, I embody all this methodology for more than three years, let's say, in this particular matter. But later, I unified the biographical work, which is understanding the human perspective from that point of karmic and relationships and incarnation. So when you understand your life through the influences as well with each planet that has in your biography, and you understand the laws that are in each of your seven-year cycle, and after you comprehend how these facts are leading you towards about who you are really, gives you the whole picture about your life work, your evolution, your radiance, your emotional intelligence, your spiritual intelligence, your purpose, your abundance, your money, your culture, whatever you need for you to bring that blueprint into this lifetime. But not anymore from the ego perspective or the autopilot perspective, from the authentic perspective, which is, all right, I'm going to help you to put all these layers out of the truth human being that you are. And I'm telling you, you're going to expand in levels that you never thought before. So that's my uniqueness, that I bring those tools in a very unique pathway where, for example, I have groups that I have in between nine and 10 weeks where I am, you know, leading them towards their own biography using the astral quantum profiles or the energetics and the aura and the gene keys, but mostly the biographical work and understanding incarnation and the purpose of the soul and the spiritual laws that are affecting us so much in our lives, not only for your relationships, but as well business-wise and your branding and your money and your stuff that is related to more aspects. Yeah. It's very powerful. And I know that your expertise is unparalleled in the intricacies of somatic healing. Can you walk us through how somatic healing became a cornerstone of your practice? Were there specific moments or breakthroughs that solidified its importance? Yes. The first uh, moment that I had some connection with that was when I was studying natural medicine and I became a naturopathic doctor because the physical body is just the latest ladder in the whole process, right? We're starting with a, a thought process, a thinking process that is going to affect your emotional stage. And from that, the body is going to tell you through the pain and through unbalanced situations, where is your conscious levels? So for me, it was very interesting to put and to unify the emotional state of mind as well with the expression of those emotions and how are connected with the physical body and create illnesses or pathologies or unbalanced situations in your emotional state. So for me, it was to comprehend all these thoughts and to put it into place that each of those emotions are coming to you to evolve and have more consciousness. The pain in the body is consciousness in the wrong place. So if I have, for example, a pain in my shoulder, the question is, of course, is to address that pain, but not going just to the symptom is, okay, what are the things that emotionally are connected with my mobility of moving forward? Because that's one of the things that is connected, that the, the shoulder, if it's the right or left, also has an incredible impact in a way how uh, maybe you are related to yourself or your self-care or you're needed for recognition, right? I work a lot with Kabbalah as well. 
is, is one of the things that I use in the practice. And from that is to understand the somatic healing that comes through it because the body is going to tell you where is the imbalance situation in your emotional yeah. guidance system, which is connected with the nerve system. I think gave us a huge map for us to be aware as well about things. Now, for someone listening to this, or if they're intrigued by somatic healing, but they're unsure where to start, is there any guidance you can offer to help them incorporate somatic practices into their own personal transformation journey? Sure. The first thing that I will tell them is to pause and to have that space to ask questions and to ask the question about, are you happy 100%? Are you living the life that you desire to live? Are you exhausted? Are you really connected with your alignment or who you are really in this process? And then I think one important thing to incorporate is the balance in between my rhythms, my habits, right? What is my rhythms in the day? I'm too hustling. What is my late motif that is leading me towards? Maybe the core wound of your hustling is I'm not recognized by no one. So I have to put myself out there just because I want to conquer and, and have the power because if not, I am no one, right? So it's those questions, but th those questions has to be really truth questions with the truth answers into it. And then practice nature is a huge healer. So practice new habits of what can I nourish myself? much better? What is my self-care days? What can I nourish myself in a different ways? If I am in reactive mode, all the time reactive about things, it's because I'm in the shadow constantly. So that means that you're the effect of many things. So it's to do like a kind of x-ray <laughs> process of yeah. evaluation, right? Oh, I'm going to evaluate myself. Really? How am I? What can I do different? And start asking questions about the truth. Beautiful. Do you have any parting words at all? And where can people find you? You can find me through the social media. I'm all over them, like Instagram and Facebook. I have a nice group in Facebook and LinkedIn. You can find me there. But also my email can be given or my phone number. I'm more than happy to share that because I, how can I help people in ways that they are extraordinary? fascinating way and creating that excellence that is so needed in the time being of this moment that we all are living into it. And that's under your name, is it Carla Trigo? Yes, Carla Trigo. You have also carlatrigo.com is my web in English. And yes, in social media, in Facebook is Carla Trigo, Unlock Your Potential. And yes. And do you have any passing words at all, Carla? Just be. Yes. Just pause. Just pause. <laughs> Just, yes, this, this is what is coming to me. Imagine. <laughs> Always go full circle. Full circle. We have mm. to start educating ourselves mm. to do a full circle, right? To start and closing, start and closing and be movement. As we bring this enlightening conversation to a close, we've uncovered the remarkable journey of Dr. Carla Trigo who's a true guide in unlocking hidden potentials and inspiring profound transformations from embodying energy and quantum healing to the convergence of ancient wisdom and modern science. And Dr. Carla Trigo's insights, for me, have been a beacon for those seeking alignment, abundance, and a deeper connection with their true selves. And Carla, I want to thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, your experiences and the transformative principles that guide your practice at the Abundance Coaching Institute. And for listeners, I hope that you embark on your own journey of self-discovery and align with your source energy and unlock the limitless potential that resides within you. So until next time on Transcendent Minds, may your path be filled with joy, abundance and unwavering belief in your boundless possibility.